perfect time cu artitul el. Un mie am asta asta a venit de poca asta de nou informațiune de tehnologie. Vă gustă tehnologia? Vă cunoaște tehnologia? Vă nu cunoaște tehnologia? Ia, aici n-am avut mai seta pa o pora informațiune. Ce cota tehnologia? Vă o aici cunoaștem pa este mai. A vor, nu se vede niente de niște show de newest gadget. Ce cota nouă riba mercado? E tehnologia nouă. Vă am uitat pe cine avu, îmi străvu, mai știe să. The Hyundai Ioniq 7 is a new electric SUV from the Korean car maker that will be on sale in 2024. The car is intended to revolutionize the EV business by combining exceptional performance, smart technology, and a spacious, configurable cabin with eco-friendliness. In this video, we'll take a closer look at what the 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 7 has in store for us. The Hyundai Ioniq 7 will have a sleek and futuristic style that will appeal to drivers looking for a high-end, sporty SUV. The vehicle will have Hyundai's characteristic cascading grille and integrated LED headlamps, giving it a distinct and commanding appearance. The car's body will be contoured and aerodynamic, which will help it minimize drag and enhance range. The Ioniq 7 will have a big wheelbase, which means plenty of interior space and load space. The SUV is projected to feature low ground clearance, which would improve its stability and handling on the road. The Ioniq 7 will include a panoramic sunroof that runs the length of the vehicle, allowing plenty of natural light into the cabin. In addition, the SUV will incorporate a roof-mounted rear spoiler to help minimize wind resistance and increase efficiency. The automobile will use 20-inch alloy wheels and low rolling resistance tires to help extend its range. The inside of the Hyundai Ioniq 7 will be spacious and multifunctional, with plenty of capacity for people and cargo. The car's three-row seating design will allow it to carry up to seven passengers. The interior will be well-appointed, using premium materials and finishes to provide a sumptuous atmosphere. The dashboard of the car will have a huge, high-resolution touchscreen display that will control the majority of the car's features, such as the entertainment system, climate control, and vehicle settings. The SUV will include a computerized instrument cluster, a head-up display, and a wireless charging pad for smartphones, among other innovative features. The Ioniq 7 will include a slew of driver assist systems, such as adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, automated emergency braking, and blind spot monitoring. The vehicle will also include a 360-degree video system that will provide a bird's-eye view of its surroundings making it easier to park and maneuver in tight areas. The Hyundai Ioniq 7 will be powered by an electric drivetrain that will deliver outstanding performance and efficiency. The SUV will be equipped with a 100 kWh battery pack that will allow it to travel up to 300 miles on a single charge. The electric powertrain in the automobile will be capable of producing up to 300 horsepower, providing plenty of power and acceleration. The Ioniq 7 will have a 0 to 60 amp time of roughly 6 seconds, which is excellent for an SUV of its size. The car will also be equipped with rapid charging, allowing it to recharge up to 80% of its battery in just 30 minutes. The Ioniq 7 will be able to charge using both AC and DC charging stations, allowing drivers to charge their vehicles at home or on the road. The Hyundai Ioniq 7 will include a number of innovative safety systems to keep passengers safe on the road. In the event of a collision, the vehicle will be equipped with a suite of airbags, including front, side, and curtain airbags. The vehicle will also include driver assistance systems, such as adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, and blind spot monitoring. These features will aid in accident prevention by warning drivers to potential risks and assisting with vehicle control. In addition to these amenities, the Ioniq 7 will offer Hyundai's SmartSense safety system which includes advanced features including frontal collision warning, pedestrian detection, and rear cross-traffic alert. These technologies employ sensors and cameras to detect possible road hazards and advise drivers to take appropriate action to avoid them. The Ioniq 7 is well-positioned to capitalize on the growing demand for EVs as more drivers transition to electric vehicles. The SUV will compete with other high-end electric SUVs such as the Tesla Model X and the Audi e-tron. But its combination of performance, technology, and safety features positions it as a market leader. The Ioniq 7's range, 
which is estimated to be over 300 miles on a single charge, is one of its most appealing characteristics. This is a considerable advance over prior EV versions, making the vehicle more viable for longer travels. The SUV's fast charging capability also means that drivers will be able to swiftly refuel their vehicles while on the road, improving the vehicle's versatility and convenience even more. The Ionic 7's roomy and adaptable interior is another major selling point. The car's premium finishes and innovative amenities create a pleasant and comfortable driving experience, and the three-row seating configuration makes it suitable for families or groups of travelers. The panoramic sunroof and 360-degree camera system on the Just scan a QR code aqui for more information riba YouTube. Activity of technology Aqui com a introdução novo, aqui com a bini novo, costa moderno. Panwak é só aqui como. E me deve de novo uma explicação de jeito. This is what lithium mining looks like in Chile. Here in the Solar de Atacama, in a region of the world known as the Lithium Triangle, nearly one third of the world's lithium is produced from brines. So from this plant here, how many electric vehicles are you powering? Today about 50,000, um, and we should be able to get up to 75,000 EVs every single year. With demand for electric vehicles and the lithium-ion batteries that power them, at an all-time high, Chile's vast salt flats have become a vital national resource. They contain the largest and some of the highest quality lithium reserves in the world. This, the Salar de Atacama, represents the best lithium brines in the world because it has about 2,000 parts per million of lithium concentrated in it. This is also the most cost-effective place to produce lithium in the world. In the brine mining process, extremely salty water from an underground reservoir is pumped to the surface and evaporated in large, extravagantly colored ponds, leaving high concentrations of lithium behind. The demand for it is skyrocketing, the price of it is skyrocketing, and the capacity that Chile has to exploit these resources is almost limitless. But Chile is actually losing market share to Australia, where lithium is mined from hard rock, and Argentina, where the country is welcoming international investment. Many say that Chile must act fast to ramp production, before other countries beat them to it or new battery tech is developed. It's not clear how big a window of opportunity Chile has to take advantage of this white gold. Now, Chile's president, Gabriel Boric, has announced a long-awaited state-led plan for the development of the country's lithium industry, in which private companies will be required to partner with the government to further develop the country's vast resources. Lithium stocks slumped on the news, as many fear that the plan will deter private investment. When you are asked to make the investment, to take all the risks, but without control of the profits and without control of the company, that's not the way people used to do business. But Boric has a lot of considerations to balance, as the effect of brine mining on ecosystems and water supply is a constant concern and open question, as there's just not enough research to fully understand its impacts. Chile's indigenous communities, though, have traditionally opposed mining. I know that the lithium is necessary for the world, but at the cost of that it is our land, our place. The salad is like a great tree of life for us. It is like a heart donde fluyen todas las aguas eh, superficiales como subterráneas. Es nuestro pequeño mar de Calantay y está siendo afectado. There are only two lithium companies operating in the country today. North Carolina-based Albemarle, the largest lithium producer in the world, and SQM, the second largest producer. CNBC visited Albemarle's lithium plant in the Solar de Atacama, where we spoke with the company and community members alike about this pivotal moment in Chile's history. Mining has helped drive the Chilean economy for centuries. The country is by far the largest copper producer in the world, producing 29% of the global total. But as of late, Chile's lithium industry has taken center stage. In 2022, the exports of lithium were uh, around $7.7 .7 billion, which is uh, more than eight times that the exports that we had during 2021. That's not because Chile is exporting that much more lithium, but because the price of the metal rose so high last year. Here in the salt flats of northern Chile, near the border with Argentina and Bolivia, lithium has been mined since the 1980s, before lithium-ion batteries were even commercialized. 
So in the 80s, lithium was used primarily, it's used in greases to make the, make the grease more viscous. It's used in ceramics, it's used in glass. It's used as a medicine as well for, for bipolar and for depression. Today, where the demand is really coming from is from electric vehicles. Your smartphone uses uh, several grams of lithium. An electric vehicle battery uses about 60 to 80 kilos of lithium. Extracting lithium from brines is a fairly straightforward but lengthy process. First, mineral-rich brine is pumped to the surface. Once it's at the perfect point, chemically speaking, then we'll pump this brine uh, from here over to Pond 15, which is the first pond of our 15 ponds. As the brine moves through all the ponds, a variety of other salts precipitate out, leaving behind increasingly large concentrations of lithium. Here at Albemarle's Solar Plant, it takes about 18 months for the brine to reach 6% lithium concentration, after which the liquid is transported over 150 miles via truck to Albemarle's processing facility in Antofagasta, which we also got the chance to visit. Typically, we send between about 24 and 30 trucks every single day. Here, lithium is further purified into battery-grade lithium carbonate. Just scan a QNR code Aki for mass information. Riba YouTube. Essa boa companhia se não se pôs o dia muito online da casa é impossível. E se não se tem meio de voz também para focar se levar dinheiro na sua página. Se é de aprender o website para criar propaganda no grupo da Resanta e a companhia não está a ser aqui. Então tem uma de focar se levar dinheiro em meu produto e serviço. Nós não somos de atrair cliente novo para o online. Então está claro que essa boa companhia de 2022 tomou contato com nós. Por el año 1930, Bullchan está brindando el mejor servicio, producto de calidad, con amor y cariño. No saco un duro para traer y esparar, para si no llegan a lo cual te desea. La PCI nos está introduciendo el servicio de garantía B-Care, para si no hay una oportunidad para asegurar la inversión. Así uso de la inversión con toda tranquilidad. Dentro de todo el programa de nosotros, nos está Unbox una tecnología. Porque está quien está cerca de nosotros, es bien aquí en la house, anto Kiko nos sabe Unbox. Vamos aquí con él. Three D printing, it's cool. It's actually never been cooler. Things have seriously improved, and so it's time to jump back in. And I didn't even know Anchor was getting into this market, but apparently, you know, that's the case. And they have something here that looks cool and different from some of the three D printers that I've had in the past. Right on the front, they're saying five times faster, extra intelligent, auto leveling seven by seven. 0.1 millimeter detail, three-step assembly, built-in AI camera monitoring, aluminum alloy structure, and auto-created time lapses, which could be cool. There's a hub allowing you to connect multiple devices, a nice little toolkit. But this is what it's gonna look like. I mean, I don't know how many points you're willing to give for looks, but when I think of a futuristic looking 3D printer, this is kind of what I might imagine. All right, so I'm gonna do a little magic trick here. I'm gonna slap the top of the box and then it's gonna be right in front of us, fully assembled. Magic. Look at this beauty. Got the filament up top, the touch screen over here, the tray with which we're going to do our printing. We get all types of stuff in this setup as well. The toolkit that I mentioned, which comes in a solid container. Got our little cutters, our different tips for the screwdriver, variety of keys, whatever accessories you're gonna need to manage your 3D printer. Now these guys have already been playing around with this thing and printing a few things. Look at these little knickknacks. It's a tiny little tugboat. That's the type that Mickey Mouse was on, something like that. And then also, what about an octopus egg holder? How cute. And I was looking at these things. I'm like, these are pretty robust. And then Will also made a whistle. Does this actually work? 
legit, man. It's amazing, you know, the 3D printer thing, it's just, it kind of wavers in terms of interest, like it gets really hot, and then I, re I remember when it first bust on the scene, and then quietly improvements have been made in the background, and we've found ourselves at, at devices like this one with uh, tremendous capability and doing things faster now, which has been kind of one of those drawbacks previously with 3D printers is, okay, how long is it gonna take to print? And they've aimed to take that number down. So what are we gonna do? Okay, let's jump into the app real quick. There's lots of different things we can print. Oh, I got a couple peels here as well. I hear a little fan kick up on a unit. Woo, hello, hello there. Nice little touch screen over here. Let's see, control. Woo! Listen to those sound effects. Be -doo. Be -doo. We were just having a conversation about technology working for or against us. This is one of those products where, like, it still kind of feels a little bit magic every single time you send a print and then you have a physical object. You're reminded at how fantastic technology can actually be when it's working for you. All right, so now we are into the app. You can see the Anchor Make M5 represented here. You can see the temperature. You can preheat it. I can head into the settings here configure to Wi-Fi, share the printer with other devices, and then most excitingly, I can head into Explore and actually look at stuff that I can print just instantly like that. Look at the monster mask. There's the egg holder that we did. I should make something for my daughter. I'm gonna go with the bunny. I've decided on the bunny, I'm gonna click print. I'm gonna select my printer. It's gonna take two hours and I'm gonna need 44 grams of filament. So let's go ahead and print it. Oh baby, here we go, let's go. Oh, everybody's like, Lou, it's a 3D printer. We, we get it. Why are you so pumped? I'm pumped because Will's pumped. It, we've been invigorated in this studio space at the prospect of rejuvenating our love of the 3D printing. High five. So anywhere around the world? <laughs> Into the mic right here, please. So that 3D printer has an actual camera and you can watch the process of the printing anywhere you want. And you can check up on it if there are errors. So. Remote. You love this thing? I'm a big fan. He loves it. We can also pause our print from here. So like Will's saying, since you have the camera on there, if you notice some sort of an issue, you can hop into the app and remotely pause or stop the printer to avoid catastrophe. <laughs> I've worked with 3D printers in the past and this by far is the easiest. You don't have to level anything. He's a tough guy to impress. Yeah. We are almost there now. Oh, wow. Look at this plate going. I feel so satisfied and calm right now. This type of thing I'm gonna do when I retire. I'm just gonna sit around and like 3D print stuff. Now we're gonna probably give you a time lapse at this point, so you get all the gratification in even less time, but believe it or not. Just scan a QR code Aki for more information. Riba YouTube. Esta que estaba de tour turcos para hoy noche. Dan que para seguirnos un día más. Seguirnos arriba tour en medio de la social, Facebook, YouTube y también tiene hobby más. Dan que seguro nos sponsor, dan que para mirar arriba en pantalla, puta así. Y programa aquí posible para. Te otro semana, con Dios poder. Feliz noche.